You're watching Steve TV. There was a baby turtle. It was about the size of a 50 cent piece. No, it's gone. That's a shame. Yeah, unfortunately it's gone. That's all right, we'll find another one. Also reptiles, um, lizards that are about uh, two foot long, known as eastern water dragons. All sorts of things like that. The umbrella tree. I guess the berries if we're exceptionally lucky. Just above us is a plant we call the umbrella tree. I've stalled again. Oh, the umbrella tree has a pretty interesting indigenous use. Basically, it was a bit of a medicine. If you had a sore tooth, what you do is you go to this tree, you cut off some of the bark, and you start chewing on that bark. Now, at first it would really hurt because you're chewing on a toothache, but that bark actually has a poison in it which acts as a painkiller. It uh, numbs the nerve endings. So, so in that way, it would uh, work quite well. Just above the knot on that tree, there's a tiny baby water dragon. It almost looks like a stick pointing up.
And just here, we have another indigenous medicine. This plant overhanging the water. Um, basically, if you cut your finger and you didn't have access to a doctor, this tree would be where you go. If you cut your finger and you don't have access to a doctor, all sorts of things can happen. You can get blood poisoning, you can go septic, you can get gangrene, all sorts of things which you don't like. So uh, what you could do is you could go to that tree, known as a paperbark or a malaluca, you could get some of the leaves and you could crush them up. When you've crushed them up, oil will come out of those leaves and that oil is an antiseptic. It means it's an antibacterial and an antifungal or it will clear up that infection for you. So uh, hopefully what you would do is you will cut your finger and you realise you've cut your finger and you would just put it on before it gets infected. Larger water dragon, just on the log. Yeah, there we go. Oh, can't see me, and I knew it fast enough. is because of the brighter colouring. It wasn't like a fully grown male. Um, fully grown males have much brighter colouring again. They have blues, they have yellows all over them. And that's to signify that they're a dominant male and that, uh, well, they're easy to see to start with and that uh, they have that territory that they're trying to show off. What we're about to do now is uh, what made army ducks so important during, well, so successful during World War II. Basically, this is a water to land transition, and you'll notice that I'm still talking while I'm doing it. It's not really that difficult at all. The only things I did have to do was uh, pull the propeller out of here, which is this lever here, and uh, open up the drain pump, which is the lever behind the seat. That was actually quite important during World War II. Um, if you can imagine, before World War II, well, not before World War II, during World War II, there was a lot of amphibious assaults. And before an amphibious transport, to get supplies to where the troops were, you would need to get a supply ship to build supplies on it, and uh, then a small boat to transport all those supplies to somewhere where you can drop those supplies off. So hopefully a dock if it existed, otherwise something a little less conventional. And from there, uh, what you would do is you'd unload all the supplies onto the dock and then load them back onto a truck. And uh, that obviously took up a lot of manpower. You needed spare parts for the smaller boats. You couldn't use them to attack things. You'd have to defend them. All sorts of things like that. So uh, what if you could have the dock and the truck and the boat as exactly the same thing? Which is pretty much what army ducks were. And uh, they only needed to keep spare parts for the army ducks, which uh, was a very good thing. They only needed to service the one thing, so it took up far less manpower and you didn't have to man a truck and a dock and a boat. All you had to do was man an army duck. So uh, these vehicles are actually an exceptionally efficient way to transport goods. For World War II, obviously we've uh, improved since then. Now I did say that there's a waterfall between here and the coast that keeps all the saltwater crocodiles out. This is it right here, guys. No, this is just a spillway for the dam. The actual waterfall that I'm talking about is the Baron Fall.
you might notice that the rainforest is not exactly like the other rainforest. The reason for that is because it's recovering rainforest. About a hundred years ago, this was a coffee plantation. Forty years ago, it turned into a tourist park. And uh, the landowners decided they didn't need that land, so they've just let it regrow. Estimates, but uh, it'll probably take another hundred years before it looks like the rainforest in front of us. And that sloshing you heard was all the water on the inside of the army duck. Actually, this plant right here, anybody guess, would like to guess what it is? It's all along here, two over there. Actually, no, this is a different plant. Just back there. Cocoa. Cocoa. Coffee. Getting there. Coffee. coffee. That's the one. Yeah, that's a coffee plant. Um, the way it works is that uh, the berries turn red and then they can be eaten. Uh, so you get birds and lizards and things like that eating them, or in this case, nothing's found it yet and they've started rotting. Um, commercially, what happens is that once they turn red, they get picked and uh, the skin and some sugars out of that bean, they're stripped off chemically and uh, then they're dried out. And after that, they're roasted and that, um, well, then that's your coffee roast and you can then grind it up and that's your coffee grind. That's cafe. Indeed. Uh, not only that, they did quite a lot of uh, engineering based things, such as for example, producing differentials under the under this vehicle, the gearbox, the transfer case, or the engine. Uh, they also produce things like, for example, entire trucks, jeeps, tanks, and of course, army ducks. What, what happened in World War II is that army ducks had a set lifetime and then they would be scrapped or entirely refurbished. So uh, that was about three years. These army ducks have been refurbished a couple of times, but um, basically they're still pretty original. They've lasted about 70 years in their original trip, which I think is very, very impressive.